Hey, Dwayne, did you see that story about those people down at Fun Spot waiting in that line for White Castles? You mean the one where they were lining up at the food cart to buy a burger, and they were waiting in line for eight hours? Andy, that's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gentlemen to beat the beast where news races the beast now you may recognize both of us from coasternet but we have a very special new brand spanking new show for you where our great concept is we're going to take the news of the week and we're going to have some great news some great discussion some great opinions but we're only going to have four minutes and 10 seconds to talk about each topic. Now, you may be wondering yourself, hey, wait a minute. Why four minutes and 10 seconds? Indeed, my friends, that is the ride time of yes. the beast. So each yes. and every week, each and every story, our goal is to have our time be under four minutes and 10 seconds. If we can accomplish that, we'll be hashtag better than the beast. If we don't, though, you'll hear this and we'll be hashtag worse than the beast. So, Dwayne, welcome to Better Than the Beast. What are your thoughts on this brand new show from CoasterNet? Well, I tell you what, it's so great to be back. You know, it's been a long time since the SHQ. Most of you were used to hearing me on the audio part, not seeing me so much on the video part, but so nice to be back once again with everyone here at CoasterNet.com. And uh, what a great concept for this show. Uh, if anybody's ever seen uh, the show, I'm not going to say the name of the show, but on ESPN where two guys are talking about topics back and forth, and one of them's from Canada and one of them's from Chicago, um, that'll maybe give you a hint of what we're talking about here. Uh, that's what this show is sort of going to be like and so it's gonna be a whole lot of fun we're going to take some topics that uh maybe are not so much you know top news story worthy but they are always going to be interesting topics for us to talk about and each show we're going to have a different concept where today one of our segments is going to be called word and we'll explain that as we get to that point here in just a little bit so i'm so excited to get this started hopefully we can get a following going and hear all your all's comments about the show uh coming up here on coasternet.com and so uh Really looking forward to this, Andy. And also, I wanted to tell the people about this show. You can go and get the actual stories, the articles themselves of the stories we're talking about on coasternet.com. You may want to tell a little bit more about that. For sure. So if you look towards the middle, you may recognize, you may already see the stories that we are talking about here this evening. <laughs> um, so these are the, these are our topics. Now, also down below in the comment section on YouTube, you'll have direct links to these stories on CoasterNet. So you might want to go preview the news stories before you watch this because we're not going to exactly talk about every single detail within the story. We're right. going to give you the highlights of the story and then tell you what our opinions of those stories are. So you might want to go ahead first to go read the news stories. We'll wait for you. Don't worry. Just put the video on pause. Come right back and we'll still be here. Don't worry. Um, so we have all these, we'll have these four stories to talk about during this first episode. So I'm thinking, Dwayne, um, let's get right into the first story here. Uh, if we could uh, start the timer, please, for four minutes and ten seconds. There you go. There's the timer. And the first story that we're going to be talking about is the... Uh, the Dolphins down at SeaWorld Orlando. So just this week we learned that they are discontinuing the uh, practice of feeding the dolphins uh, at, at, at Dolphin Cove at SeaWorld Orlando. Now before, you could buy a $7 tray and they would feed the dolphins. Now this week it's gone. They, they, now, they put in a different program that you're still going to be able to pet the dolphins to, but you're not going to actually be able to feed the dolphins. Now, this comes from um, a few months ago, uh, actually almost over a year ago at this point, that uh, there was an issue of a girl being bitten on the hand by one of these dolphins, that she had the fish in her hand with the tray. She got bit. 
Um, it became a big story. And now all of a sudden we're discontinuing this practice, um, uh, which is kind of weird, too, because they've already discontinued the practice at um, – at both SeaWorld San Antonio and SeaWorld San Diego. So it's not completely different here than what the other parks are doing, but they're, they're switching into a new program where you can take a picture and you can uh, be with a supervised trainer. So they're changing all of this up at SeaWorld. What are your thoughts, Dwayne? Is this good, bad, what? Well, first off, it better be some real high-quality fish for $7 on that platter that they were able to feed them. No, but by sure, it's got to be restaurant-quality fish, as they like to talk about at SeaWorld. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, seriously, I mean, seriously, with this entire story, come on. I mean, I understand, dolphins are animals, okay? And, you know, it's like when you go to the zoo and I tell you, don't put your hand through the lion's den. Well, obviously, okay? A dolphin is a wild animal, all right, and there are going to be times when you are feeding them, even though these are captive animals, you know, that have been trained and, and they're kind of like pets, you know, you can do the same thing to your dog at home and get bitten, okay? If you get too close, if you invade their space, if you're teasing them with food, I mean, who knows what actually happened, all right, for this to happen. I understand with the way things are going out on these days of lawsuits and all this mess, Okay, yes. Okay, I can understand why they're doing it. If, if the other parts of SeaWorld have already done that, then, yeah, please go ahead and ban the feeding. But in my opinion, okay, heck, you've got people in other parks swimming with the dolphins. So how mm. really, you know, how much of an issue is it really uh, to, to feed the dolphins? I mean, I go and feed the fish, right? When you, you go to Cedar Point or, and to Kings Island and you feed the fish. Okay, but I'm also not getting right up to their bottle noses and feeding them out of hand like I would a giraffe or something like that. Um, but again, wild animal, hey, you know what? You're you're at your own risk, in my opinion. But the park has to keep themselves, you know, above the water here, and I think that's why they've done it. And well, you know, another thing is is that they were saying that a lot of the aquariums have discontinued this practice. That they said that. Um, another issue was that, you know, people were dropping items into the dolphin pool, which I don't see how this practice stops that, that people are still being allowed to pet them. So things are still going to drop into the pool. Um, but then another right. big issue was, is that, uh, the dolphins were constantly eating and being fed by people. So they never got into real good rhythms of how, um, of how they should be eating, you know, s at set meal times, and they were constantly having all these snacks. It was screwing with their digestive system, and people said, hey, wait a minute, you know, maybe this isn't the right thing to do. But like you said, for sure, other places are still swimming with dolphins, so obviously it's not completely unsafe that dolphins are known to be pretty friendly animals that you really don't have hear about a lot of dolphin attacks all the time. Um, so if you can do it at like Discovery Cove at or in Orlando, you know, what's what's the big deal here? I think the biggest deal is that $7 is not... We uh, we did not beat the beast that time. So... <laughs> no, we absolutely did not. <laughs> okay. so That, that's that went a lot faster show. than I thought. <laughs> so that's the point of the show there. Um, so let's go on to the next topic here. Um, the next topic is start the clock, my good friend, and let's race the beast again. Uh, this topic now is Fury 325, that one of the biggest new coasters um, of the 2015 season down at Carowinds is opening up. And, and Carowinds just announced their first writer program. Uh, it's going to be an auction, and it's going to benefit the Cam Newton Foundation. Um, so uh, you don't like Cam Newton? What? Not Carolina Panthers? Not a big fan there, Dwayne? What's up? I, I, I listen, I have no problem, okay, with it going towards his foundation. I've actually, I know about the foundation. I know what it's for, okay? Um, and of course, Cam Newton's been in the news, you know, playoffs, got in that wreck where he said he was, fear, you know, fearful for his life. His life flashed in front of him when his truck flipped over. Yeah, but I fear, are they making this into a publicity stunt, not just for the park itself, but I understand that they're trying to bring Charlotte back. They think Charlotte kind of fell off the map for a long period of time. And that's all well and good. But why bring in, you know, an NFL star? But then again, 
Okay, I guess you could say, you know, Kings Dominion, and they did this before when they did the whole Dale Earnhardt stuff in the NASCAR, which I know is a huge part of North Carolina. It's a huge part of Charlotte. Okay, um, but really, why? I, why not just do it what the rest of Cedar Fair does, which is forgive kids the world? And I'm not saying what they're doing is bad because I like this foundation. I know all about it, like I said. Um, but I just don't understand about bringing in this high-profile guy. Is he, number one, is he going to be there for the event? I don't, I don't know, and I know that you... It says, well, we do know that if you are the winner, there will be three trains, 96 total winners will be on um, Fury for the first rider. You'll get a hat, a T-shirt, uh, free admission for the day. Um, but also, the if you're in the first row of the car, you'll also get a signed Cam Newton football. Oh, yes. Um, well, yeah, and I will say that that's a that's a big incentive. Now, don't get me wrong, because Cam Newton is an up and coming quarterback. He's young. You don't know where his career is going to take him. He has been in the playoffs multiple times as a young quarterback, and so again, I can understand that. And he would be the face of sports. All right, with the exception of maybe NASCAR, but there are so many people in Charlotte that's a part of NASCAR. But when you think of football, major sport, American sport, everybody watches it, Charlotte, North Carolina, you're thinking of Cam Newton. And so I think that that's, you know, and, and it may be the park's idea as well to to use that um, marketing campaign to get more people there. I think a lot of people are already excited about it anyway. That's going to be all right, one of the it is going to be the tallest you know uh, coaster in regards to that type of coaster in in our country. Um, so I'm not saying I'm not looking forward to it myself. I can't wait to ride it whenever I get a chance to do that. But I just don't understand if this is the right marketing way to go about doing it. And that's my opinion. I'm going to stick to it. Here's the better question because Cedar Point up north is doing a different foundation. Is Cam Newton better than LeBron James? And maybe we should just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Good uh, one. That is excellent. Yes, absolutely. So that time we beat the beast. Yeah, we beat the beast. Absolutely. See, now, now we know what we're doing. <laughs> um, well, the next segment of our show, you kind of hinted at the beginning. So why don't you tell us about the next segment yes. of the show and what's all about? So excited about this segment, Andy. We, um, what, what this is going to be, and this isn't going to be every single show. This is the time period where we're going to do something different every single week. Um, I got a different, I got a whole bunch of different games we can play with inside of this show, but this one we're going to call the word. And we're going to have two stories and we're going to, um, kind of explain to you in a sentence, all right, what this story is, okay? And so I'm going to ask Andy about this first story, and I'm going to, to tell him, you know, and then I'm going to ask him to give me one word on what he thinks describes that sentence story that I just gave him. And then he's going to go uh, go around and, 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 and giving his word for that and his explanation of the word, excuse me, um, on that specific story. And then Andy will do one back to me um, as well, and so that way we both have an opportunity to give our word uh, for that. Now, um, it's, again, this is just one week of this. Uh, we're going to see how it goes, uh, but it, is, it can be really interesting because it's interesting to see what type of word comes to our mind first when we hear a story like this. You ready to give it a try? Do we start the clock? Yeah, definitely start the clock, absolutely. S yes. Start the clock. Let's race the beast. All right, okay. King Kong being added at IOA. Your word. Undinotastic. And the Good reason one. why I say that is, is because I, what are they thinking down there at Islands of Adventure? King Kong? Seriously? King Kong, that you're taking land away from the biggest movie this summer. The biggest movie this summer is going to be Jurassic World. And you're taking away land from Jurassic Park at Islands of Adventure to put in a King Kong ride. Now, we don't know anything about this ride yet. That, that according to the news story, that they finally confirmed that all the construction that we saw down at Islands of Adventure, now the, the area that we're talking about is between the Jurassic Park area and the Toon Lagoon area, that they took out the huge Jurassic Park, the iconic Jurassic Park archway, that's gone already, and they've been building this huge building over there. Um, and speculation has run rampant that it's going to be King Kong. But finally this week we had um, in a earnings call a... 
a, a, a universal executive say that, yes, this will be a King Kong attraction. Um, that now you may remember too that they had a King Kong attraction at Universal Studios Florida, um, all the way up into 2002 called the Kong Frontation. And that was taken out in 2002, uh, because of declining ridership, uh, maybe because nobody was watching King Kong anymore. And, uh, they took it out and now they're trying to revitalize it by bringing it back. We already have a Universal Hollywood version of this ride. Um, that, that you have, you know, King Kong out there in Hollywood. Now there, we don't know if it's going to be the same ride system. We don't know if it's going to be a completely new ride system. So we really don't know anything about it yet, but we do know it's going to be King Kong. So Dwayne, I'm going to throw it over to you. What's your word for this? Um, pointless. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only thing that I can think of because I can tell you right now I'm not a King Kong fan first off um, and to me and I was thinking about this too as you're sitting there talking would this not be a better place or a better place for a ride like this would be over in Japan or China I don't know maybe I'm wrong but I, I think that they're going to get more out of a of a title like that where Jurassic Park means more probably I'm not saying King Kong doesn't they brought back King Kong in the movies again I understand that but I think in regards to the, the theme park enthusiast, I think King Kong would be better off in a, in a foreign country uh, where it may be well, more well-known than it is here, especially because the newer generation really doesn't know much about King Kong, and the newer generation is the ones going to theme parks, especially Disney, uh, with the exception of families, and, and Islands Adventure especially. But then again, my point is you might as well just keep adding to Harry Potter because no one else cares. All they want is Harry Potter stuff anyway. I know it's not the same park, but hey, might as well, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the other thing is, is I think you bring up a good point, is, is these younger generation. And you, you look at all the stuff that, that Universal has added to really put them back on the map, that the Harry Potter thing was number one. Man, did that thing not take off? I, you know, unbelievable. Wow. You, you, have, you have just recently Transformers, one of the biggest movie franchises you know, in the last 10 years is they've, they've already had four movies, tons of money, awesome ride. That's bringing people into the park. People are going down to these parks because they want to see Harry Potter. They are specifically buying a ticket to go see Harry Potter. You might even say they're buying a right. ticket to go see Transformers. But the question is, who's buying a ticket to go see King Kong? He's a monkey. Nobody wants to go see King Kong. Who's flying from Chicago? down to Orlando to go ride the King Kong ride. Nobody is. So I'm going to say one, one person may go. One person <laughs> may go. And that would be the guy who invented the banana split. The oh banana split guy may be the only person oh, to go. God. Would you pull him off? Pull him off the ride. Hey, wait, I, 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 already. <laughs> I know. Okay, now I got one for you. Now this is the story that we led into. Okay, so if we could start the clock on this story, uh, just past weekend, uh, you may have seen the story that down at Fun Spot America, we had quite the ruckus. And I'm not talking about the shooting on the other side of town. I'm talking about the White Castle truck <laughs> showed up at Fun Spot America. And not only were people going crazy over White Castle, but people were waiting in line for over eight hours to get themselves a slider. Now, people that don't know what White Castle is, White Castle is like a northern Midwest thing, little mini burgers that you see them on a lot of menus now, this idea of sliders. It's a unique taste. I'm not going to lie to you that if you've ever had a White Castle, it's an acquired taste. You almost had to have grown up with it to actually enjoy it. But those people that have moved away from the Midwest and out to the West Coast and down South, they've lost the ability to purchase White Castle. And this week we saw the ramifications of that, that when the Craver truck comes, that you have these people lining up all over the place. So, Dwayne, what is your one word? Burger licious. <laughs> and why is that? Absolutely. I tell you what, man. Now, granted, we don't have any White Castles in West Virginia, but I've had them before. And there's another there's another fast food chain that does sliders like that. And I can't think of the name Crystals. of it. It's up Crystals. here. 
That's what it is. Crystal it's Burgers, nice. yes. And I actually enjoy Crystal Burger better than I do White Castle. Um, but when I saw this story, <laughs> I was like, okay, understood. Okay, understood. Because I've had it. I understand what the crave is all about. But who in their right mind would stand in a line at a theme park for eight hours for a burger that is no bigger than this? Actually, it's probably smaller than that. And, and if I paid to get in the theme park, okay, I'm going to spend eight hours standing in lines to ride a ride, not buy my tickets, go stand in line to eat a burger that I could just hop on a plane, go about eight hours to the north, find one, and I could spend less than two minutes in line getting the exact same food. That is not just burgerlicious. That is just burger stupidity. And I don't care. I don't care how good, okay, the food is. I don't care if you were giving me the most expensive truffles, all right, on a gold plate. I am not standing in eight hours unless it's going to give me like five million bucks. That's it. I don't even stand more than 45 minutes in a line to ride the best coaster in the world, let alone eating some little tiny burger that I could just go and make myself. I could go down here to Kroger. I could buy me this little tiny piece of meat. I could put it on a slider bun that they now sell in the store, and I would be just fine. I don't need to sit in front of a White Castle truck and smell it for eight hours, let alone then sit there and try and eat it. Oh, all man. you. You can take it. You're you're from the Midwest. You can have this oh, story all man. you want. What's your word oh, for this? Oh man, this is, my word right now is I'm feeling the crave right now because I'll tell you what. Mm. I, I want to go to White Castle right now. Let's end this show. I'm glad this is the last story we're doing tonight because I'm jumping in my car. I'm driving to White Castle and I'm going to go get myself a Craver pack this evening, I think. <laughs> you go right ahead. I don't I don't have the ability to do that. I'll go down here to McDonald's to get me a cheeseburger because that's all we have. Oh man! And then I'm gonna post pictures on the on the Fun Spot page and show me eating all my burgers and they ain't got none down there anymore. <laughs> that's right, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, I, I love a good White Castle. I do, I do, I do. Uh, so we beat the beast on that one, obviously. Uh, we got into the break run before the beast did. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope uh, that you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, it's something new, real short and sweet. Get right to the point. Um, I, I, you know, we're going to do this every week. We're going to pick four stories every yep. week, talk about them, do a few gimmicks here and there to try and spice it up a little bit. But the whole point is, you know, having fun and having a good time with these stories and looking at the industry and maybe in a little bit different way uh, in, in under four minutes. It's 10 seconds to be exact. Uh, that, that great That's old exactly wood coaster, right. the great old wood coaster, the beast. We're going to beat it every time, hopefully. So we were, we almost did it halfway there today. Um, so as always, thank you for joining us here on Beat the Beast. I'm, of course, Andrew Maybe. Marchek from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm Dwayne Sponsor from Parkersburg, West Virginia. May the Q lines be ever in your favor. And right on, Ride Warriors.